hour in the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. You're on with Gene and Chris on the Paracast this week, except technically Chris isn't here yet. He's on the highway, driving back to his home in Arizona, so we might call him on the way if we can get a decent cell signal on his iPhone. If we can't, we'll talk to him later in the show. But we do have the famous or infamous paranormal <laughs> blogger and commentator Red Pill Junkie with us. And we sometimes just call him Miguel because that's his name. Welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, Gene. Thanks for, for having me. You know, it's a uh, pleasure to be back on the podcast. Now, let me preface this discussion before we get into our topic of interest with Miguel, which is the Roswell slides, or as Kevin D. Randall calls them, not the Roswell slides. Let's talk about the Paracast and our premium version, Paracast Plus. And of course, we also feature the After the Paracast podcast. Now, as you might expect, some regard it as a badge of honor if you're good enough for people to pirate your intellectual property. So here's how it works in the Paracast. If you're a listener to the regular show and some have asked us, can we allow them to post the regular show intact with ads on a YouTube channel? And sometimes we let it happen. It's okay because they get a little traffic to their channel and we get more listeners. So everybody's happy. Maybe they get a couple of dollars of AdSense money. But with the premium service, this is something we charge for. We give you the ad-free version of the Paracast. We give you After the Paracast, which is our exclusive premium podcast. We give you all that stuff, and we charge you a modest fee of $5 a month, $50 a year, $175 for five years. And we have a little set of terms and conditions, which basically says, go ahead and download, go ahead and listen, copy it to your other devices, let your family hear it, but don't post the thing, okay? That's common sense. Don't post it. Well, guess what, Miguel? Somebody posted it. Ah, uh, Jesus. So here's what happens. I contacted the person, no response. I posted an item for each of the premium shows posted on that channel saying, don't download this. This is posted without our authorization. I then went to YouTube and requested a takedown order. But the way YouTube works, you can't just take down the channel that has content that maybe infringes on your rights. You have to go to every single download, every single selection, and separately, although you can mix, I think, five per request, every single one has to have a separate complaint. Hmm. Okay, so we have a few dozen shows that we had to complain about. Imagine now, if you go there and you're like a daily show, five days a week, a premium show, and they've got hundreds of shows that you have to sit there and issue a separate request to YouTube <laughs> to remove the content. Wow. Yeah, unless you have some kind of assistant helping you out with all those quests to take down, you know, it will be a nightmare. You will be, be weeks on end just doing that. Now, remember here how this works. If people can get the thing free, they're not going to subscribe, so we lose money. We got a response to the takedown order within a day. We even got a response from the person who ran the channel saying, I didn't know I couldn't post that. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is a premium show. We're charging for it. I mean, go ahead and download something from iTunes, okay? Download something from iTunes and post it on YouTube and see what happens. In any case, they took it down. And then the second shoe drops. So we have a special place where you go to subscribe to the Paracast Plus at plus.theparacast.com, plus.theparacast.com. And we found that some people who go there were getting the warning that it was a phishing site. Phishing not being what you do in the river. <laughs> it means a site where they can steal your password or something. So somebody complained, and this must be like the other shoe or something, complains that the place where we tell you how to get the Paracast Plus and after the Paracast and all that. It's a phishing site. So you, in order to go there, you've got to select some kind of option saying you don't care. 
Mm-hmm. And that was Google. Google sends out those warnings. So somebody complained to Google. So that's a dirty trick. Yeah. We got that removed in another day. It's like everything is coming down on us. So we're famous, folks. Miguel, we're famous now. Don't mm. touch me. I'm a star. People want to pirate our content and play dirty tricks, I guess. Wow. I know that the podcast is a family show, Gene, and you want to keep it clean, but there is a, quite a few Spanish expletives that I could use for such kind of behavior. <laughs> but you can't, because I, I expect won't. somebody over at GCN speaks Spanish. Yeah, sure. I know my son has taught me this because my son studied Spanish in college, and he's taught me a couple of words. <laughs> okay. But you see what's happening here. Yeah. The word is getting out there. In any case, if you want to learn more about the PowerCast Plus, visit plus.thepowercast.com. As of the time the show is being aired, it does work. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. In any case, we're here to talk about either not the Roswell Slides or the Roswell Slides. And Miguel, (laughs) you went to this big event in Mexico City that we'll talk about in a moment. But we all heard about this thing for a while. Can you give our listeners a brief summary in the next three or four minutes till we break as to what the Roswell slides are? How did this thing begin? Well, I think it's a a story that began like two years ago when uh, some of the people involved in the so-called Roswell Dream Team somehow got contacted with uh, someone who claimed to have uh, a an image that supposedly was one of the aliens recovered from the uh, famous Roswell crash. And from there, there was a lot of con- uh, rumors circulating ar- around the web. And in the end, somehow Jaime Maussan got involved. And last year, he announced that he was going to have uh, this big event in Mexico City at the National Auditorium, no less. You know, like one of the most illustrious venues, theaters in the whole country. So it got my attention, definitely. And well, the thing has already transpired and uh, there's been a lot of uh, time and electrons being spent talking and discussing what happened on May the 5th. And I guess we are also going to to, to discuss it further in uh, for the benefit of the podcast listeners. I hope we're not adding to the clutter. Now, the thing I don't understand here, as I read this, and I've been following this for, I don't know, what, a year or two, as you have, how does it become Roswell Slides? Where is the connection to Roswell? Is it just because allegedly it may have been taken in 1947, these two slides? That's what they assume based uh, on the date of the Kodachrome Slides that they they got their hands on. Apparently... Uh, the slides are f- from 1947 or 1949, and therefore, uh, it's uh, it has to be Roswell in the in the eyes of the people who have been investigating that case for so many years. You know, apparently, it couldn't be from somewhere else. You know, apparently, only in Roswell, New Mexico, <laughs> the aliens uh, get drunk and they decided to crash. They decided to crash the party. You know, they were having one of these big celebrations, maybe one of the crewmen over on this (laughs) alien ship. I don't know if you can call them men or women. I assume you can because they're humanoid. And perhaps they were having the celebration, the captain, say, (laughs) had a birthday or something, or was getting married. And so they drank too much, and the helmsman forgot what he was doing, and he crashed at Roswell. That sounds ridiculous, but I think you're going to find out that isn't holding a candle to what's going on. Okay, Chris O'Brien will be joining us a little bit later. We have Red Pill Junkie as our guest, covering not the Roswell slides with Gene. You're in the Paracast.
Ted Anderson telling you about Jordan Rubin's Beyond Organic Green-Fed Raw Cheddar Artesian Cheese featuring whole milk created through ancient dairy breeding, unpasteurized, untreated whole milk on the same farm the cows graze, containing natural sources of omega-3s, CLA protein, calcium, probiotics, and enzymes. I have never tasted cheese this good, and you need to try it. Contact your Longevity distributor or call 877-878-4203 or go to GCNteam.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Quantitative easing, unemployment at depression levels, Europe financial system falling apart, China getting out of U.S. treasuries. At the end of 2008, the time of TARP, the national debt was at 11 trillion gold, trading around $850 per ounce. Close to 2012, the national debt exceeded 16.4 trillion, gold doubled to $1,600 per ounce. The 20 trillion threshold for the national debt is inevitable. Politicians in Washington have a ferocious appetite for spending and stimulus. What's worse, a printing press to finance. A hundred years ago, we had a gold standard to limit this madness, but now you have to adopt your own gold standard. Don't be fooled with paper promises. Get Midas Resources 10 Reasons to Buy Gold free by calling 800-686-2237. Understanding the gold and silver market may be the only insurance you could have to avoiding the next economic crisis. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order your free copy. Again, that's 800-686-2237. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy and get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just $19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. The Paracast. You know, he does that very well, Miguel. He is one of the best people to do. The Paracast. Of course, Nick Redfern does it pretty well with a shadow kind of laugh and Bryce Zabel and several other people. Chris does it in many voices, depending on whether there's a trickster afoot. But Miguel, known as Red Pill Junkie, very knowledgeable blogger on all things paranormal, is certainly at the top of the heap. We're talking about this episode involving Roswell Slides and how in the heck there's a connection to Roswell. And you're saying here that 
the film was manufactured between 47 and 49. Is that what I'm getting? Well, allegedly, uh, uh, that's the analysis that they uh, presented during the event provided by a guy by the name of uh, Professor Rod Slemons, who apparently said that based on the frame numbers uh, on the slides themselves, uh, they dated back to the 1940s. Okay, so they're dating this on the fact of the slides. The carrier, is that the, the key here, the carrier when it was developed? Uh, something of, uh, I'm not uh, really that uh, knowledgeable in, 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 in Kodachrome slides, but uh, the frame numbers, he, he said, you know, some red frame numbers that are printed directly in the uh, plastic uh, of the slides. So it's, it wasn't just it wasn't just the cardboard protecting the slides themselves because I know that some people said well maybe this, the, the, someone used cardboard from an old Kodachrome slide and they inserted uh, a modern a modern slide in order to fake it but according to this guy uh, also the, the the frame numbers from the slides checked out. So does that indicate it was processed between 47 and 49 or what? Clarify for me. From what I got, the slides were uh, manufactured from, uh, from 47 to 49. Okay, so they could have been taken at any time during that period. Yeah. I think okay, so that doesn't tell us sense. anything. You see, I know we're kind of spoiled nowadays because mm -hmm. with our digital cameras and our iPhones and everything – they geotag a photo when you take it. So mm -hmm. you know when it was taken and where it was taken. I mean, yes, that data can be removed, but that's the basic thing. So here you go. With these old slides, you may be able to date it within a period of a couple of years, but you can't say where it was taken. You no, can't say definitely. what date it was taken, and you certainly can't say who took it. Yeah, definitely. For example, um, they showed some of the other slides, not just uh, the ones with the alleged dead alien. Some of the slides were uh, one from Paris, you know, the famous uh, Triumph Arc, you know, in, 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 in the Parisian, Parisian streets. And I saw in one uh, blog that the UFO researcher... Uh, Gilles Fernandez, I think that's how you pronounce his name. He lives in France he, and he tried to, to see if there, his friends could try to, to see if they could um, detect the, br the brand and the date of the cars that you could see you know, circulating on, on, the, on, on the Paris streets. And I think that according to them, those cars were from the late 1950s. So 1958 or 57, in that, if I'm not mistaken. So, okay, so maybe the, the slides are from the 1940s, but uh, the, the, the images were taken uh, at a much later year. Okay, this is where it's complicated because the slides were found, what, taped under the cover of a box of other slides? Yeah, uh, so Adam Dew, you know, who uh, is the guy who came up with the slides and uh, he showed a recorded interview with a woman, a friend of his, who allegedly was the one who found the slides when she was uh, cleaning up a house. I think the house was in Sedona, Arizona. She was doing the cleanup and by accident, the box containing the slides, you know, fell to the ground and she looked at them and sh she looked uh, to a few of them. She found them interesting and she decided to, to keep them. And apparently during several years, she kept looking at, it, at them and some of the slides. She, she gradually started to see, to recognize some of the people shown in some of the photographs. For example, there's one with the famous American actor Clark Gable. There is also one with uh, Bing Crosby playing on a golf field, apparently some kind of uh, 
charity event. There is one with President Eisenhower and his brother. And apparently that photo, that slide was uh, taken in Kansas. So she started to see that the slides were interesting. She was particularly interesting, apparently, with uh, slides showing uh, airplanes, you know, those uh, small, colorful airplanes in some kind of uh, small airport. But then, uh, according to her story, she found two other slides, like inside the, the between the the bottom of the of the box so somehow they were uh, the bottom was glued together after uh, someone hit the two slides uh, underneath so uh, the only reason that she discovered them was because the box was sold and it's and in such poor condition that it was literally breaking apart and that's how uh, according to her story, she found these two other slides. And then when she looked at them, she kind of freaked out because she didn't recognize what they were, but they, 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 looked, they looked weird to, to them, to her. Okay. So we have a collection of slides here. This is the outlier. And I have a crazy question to ask here. Is there any possibility that somebody just stuck them in there? Yeah, sure. We really don't know at this moment who took the slides, who owned the slides, and who hid those other two slides inside the box. We, the, the, the members of the uh, Roswell investigation team that, uh, who organized with Mausan this event, uh, they're made the assumption that because so, some of those uh, slides um, are, are portraits of uh, this woman, Hilda Ray, and her husband, uh, their assumption is that the slides belong to them and they were taken by them, either, either, uh, either by Hilda or by her husband, uh, Bernard. Not, of course, by maybe friends or family. We've got more to come trying to figure out not the Roswell slides with Red Pill Junkie and Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. Free from the shackles of corporate America, we're the place for independent thinkers. G-C-N. Is there a secret UFO agenda? Do strange creatures from the darkest corners of the mind roam the earth? Is there evidence for mind control, time travel, or devious government conspiracies? Find out the inside scoop on the latest conspiracies, paranormal activity, and Freudian phenomena when you subscribe to Tim Beckley's Conspiracy Journal. It's jam-packed with stories, special book and DVD promotions, and the best news, it's absolutely free, sent right to your mailbox. Plus, a bonus free email newsletter sent out every Friday. Simply send an email with your name and address to Mr. UFO at webtv.net. That's Mr. UFO at webtv.net. Find out what they don't want you to know. Attention, do you owe money to the IRS or have years of unfiled returns? Are you being audited or receiving threatening letters? If the answer is yes, you need help. The IRS can seize your property and assets, impose fines and penalties, garnish your wages, and even go after your bank account. Don't take on the IRS by yourself. Don't let the IRS destroy your life. Take action now. Call our team of experts for a free and confidential initial evaluation. We've helped thousands resolve their tax problems. Let us help you. 800-261-7073. 800-261-7073. Thank <laughs> you. 
KDArmor.com is your one-stop shop for the most affordable body armor, period. With packages starting at $169.99 and free shipping on every order, KD offers soft armor and rifle threat rated armor up to level 4. Go to KDArmor.com and get your body armor today while you still can. Mention this ad and receive a free tactical scarf for a limited time with any body armor package. That's CATIArmor.com. Come and take it. You pick up the receiver with your heart racing and sweat dripping from your forehead. You finally muster the courage to dial the number to call into your favorite talk radio show. It rings once, twice, and then... Hello, it's GCN. What's your name and the state you're calling from? Surprised you got through, you squeak out. Jason from Minnesota. Please hold. As you patiently wait for your turn, you begin to daydream about being a famous talk radio host and what it would be like to have your own show. Jason from Minnesota, you're up. Millions of loyal listeners worldwide waiting to call and talk to you. Caller, are you there? Cheering crowds surround you, calling out your name. Jason! Jason! Going once, twice. Okay, we gotta move on to the next caller. You blew it. Huh? Wait, no! Interact with the host you're listening to right now, online at GCNlive.com. Click on the community link. Engage with other listeners. Ask questions. Start debates. Don't agree with the host? Let them know. Be a part of the community at GCNlive.com. Hi, John Hubner from Midas Resources. Are you tired of watching your hard-earned assets dwindle away? As government spending is out of hand and the Federal Reserve is creating in excess of $20 billion a week, are you tired of stockbrokers gambling away your hard-earned money? Is this market a setup for a crash greater than 1987? Too many of today's policies resemble those that led to the collapse of 1929. This is John Hubner, and that was me in 2007. And we all know what happened when the subprime credit bubble burst. By March 2009, the dollar lost 50% of its value. The entire U.S. banking system was on the verge of collapsing. Like all financial problems of the past, is history about to repeat itself? Call me, John Hubner, at 1-800-686-2237, extension 129, before it's too late to protect yourself. Will the oncoming catastrophe take all private IRAs, 401ks with it? There is a way to protect your hard-earned assets. Call me, John Hubner, at 1-800-686. 2237 extension 129. Hey, this is Marie D. Jones, the author of This Book is from the Future, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. On the PowerCast with Gene and Chris and Red Pill Junkie, Chris is on the road right now. So if he sounds a bit in and out, it's not because of his personality. It's because of the connection, which is going to vary a little bit for a little while before he gets back to his home and things will get better. Anyway, Chris, glad to have you aboard here so we can continue. Let me read the section here, guys, which is something from what... Kevin Randall says in his article, Not the Raswell Slides and Richard Dolan. Okay, so he made this statement, several paragraphs, actually several sentences. The provenance would be provided, but it never was. Here we're told it was that the Rays lived in Midland, Texas. The slides were recovered in Sedona, Arizona, and ended up in Chicago some 20 years after discovery, owned by a man whose identity has not been revealed. Not a compelling provenance. Well, that's an understatement. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing that bothers me here. You got these two outlier slides. And as we were mentioning with Miguel, somebody could have put them there. How do we know they're part of this other collection? You know, there's too much time that's gone by, too much question about where the slides have been, who found them, why. They weren't, uh, you know, revealed right away. It's just too much, uh, I don't know, it's just nothing just bothers about it. We're not even talking about, you know, what's on the slide. It's just the fact there's this weird kind of gap in time. I know, Miguel, what do you think about it? I have to agree with you, Chris. Uh, I feel that at this point, these guys are making too many assumptions, the assumptions about the provenance of the slides and the ownership of the slides and where the slides were, were taken. Uh, for uh, They tried to make the case that uh, 
Hilda and Bernard were a very well connected couple. Uh, she wa that she was a very accomplished lawyer and a pilot. With, uh, I must admit that's very impressive, especially for those uh, days. And that her husband was a geologist, and that uh, they were very good friends with uh, Mamie Eisenhower, who was the the wife of President Eisenhower. So that's the kind of like big assumption that okay, so s since they were friends with the Eisenhowers, ergo they might have been privy to uh, very hush hush materials like recover the aliens from the Roswell crash. Okay, but of course we can't prove that they took these pictures. We can't prove they even knew those pictures existed. Mm -hmm. What a mess. Oh, yeah, yeah the, the, the argument uh, is that if the slides were uh, of a mundane origin or a mundane topic, then how come someone hid them, right? You know, the assumption is, you know, because someone knew that they were very important and uh, they made made sure that they will be you know never found or something but then again you know someone maybe tried to to pull up a prank or maybe this someone is trying to 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 uh, do something fishy with the slides we uh, and of course we are still having to uh, believe in the word of the woman who, who found them, you know, that she indeed found them when she was making the cleaning up of this house in Sedona, Arizona. Now, of course, if you've ever watched these TV shows that cover crime scene investigations, like CSI or one of those shows, and obviously they're exaggerated, it's television, it's all going to happen in 43 minutes unless it's a two-parter. But they show very rigorous chain of custody, chain of evidence. And here we have slides put somewhere that originally were somewhere else. And we don't know who took them. And we don't know how they got where they got. I mean, it's just a complete, completely ridiculous. And I also think if somebody had genuine pictures of E.T. or E.T. or these alleged aliens from Roswell, they'd stick him in a box, a slide somewhere? Give me a break. Yeah, I feel that how they try to make their ca the case for the slides is one, trying to establish that the slides were indeed from, from the 1940s and they were not uh, some kind of, uh, they were not tampered with, right? And two, the, the, the fact that uh, the slides, the, 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 the body shown in the slides had so, so many anomalies in it that there was no way it could have been uh, a human being. So therefore, what else could it be? You know, there's some, that's something that Maussan uh, repeated in a, in a well, number of well, uh, interviews. Yeah, so did it have four four fingers, you know, and uh, the wrong number of ribs to make it human? That that was the rumor going in. Well, Maussan uh, had a number of uh, forensic specialists uh, there in, in the event, two of them Mexican and one uh, was a, a Canadian uh, professor, who, well, the, the, he, he wasn't on stage. He, uh, what they showed was a, a recorded interview with him. So the first expert on stage was uh, Jose de Jesus Salce Benitez, who is a um, medical examiner uh, as, uh, uh, working, uh, well, he's a member of the Mexican Navy. He, well, he has quite an impressive uh, resume and uh, he's done a, a, all sorts of studies and specializations. And he was the one who started uh, enumerating point by point in, in a very, uh, for a layman like me, in a very professional way, you know, why uh, the body in the slides was not a desiccated mummy, was not a child. Uh, it was not even a, a, a human being. It was not a primate. It wasn't even a mammal, according to him. All right. Now, 
before we get into that, let's back yeah. up a little bit and let's go back to the auditorium and let's mm-hmm. frame the event and mm-hmm. then we'll start covering the evidence. But you're getting a sample of it here. There were people who testified at this body seen in the slides and you'd see it online. I mean, it's everywhere, those slides. Now, not necessarily high resolution. The ones we're seeing is still fairly low resolution, but the body there, they're claiming it's not human. Although to me, it just looks like, you know, one of these pictures of a mummy. But what do I know? I'm not a forensic, an analyst or anything like that. Maybe we should get Dr. Temperance Brennan from the Bones novels and the TV show. Let her go there and figure out what they are. But in any case, I don't know if anybody else knows what I'm talking about here. <laughs> Let's go back to the event itself. So mm-hmm. on May 5th, you get this big auditorium. Is it like a Madison Square Garden? What kind of venue is this? What does it look like? Well, I'm afraid to say that I've never been to Madison Square Garden yet or Carnegie Hall, so I, I, I wouldn't have, wouldn't be able to compare them. But the National Auditorium is uh, very big, very extensive. is uh, is uh, probably the most prestigious theater in not only in Mexico City but pro- perhaps in all of Mexico. You know, it's right. In, 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 on Reforma Avenue, and Reforma Avenue is one of the most important streets in Mexico. You know, it's uh, right uh, next to uh, the Campo Marte. You know, it's one of the uh, one of the military bases. And well, so uh, all the big events in Mexico City, most of them are uh, are uh, are held there. You know, when any kind of very big artist comes. And that's where uh, they have all these uh, fancy concerts. We'll go over this fancy concert, or not so fancy in a moment, with Gene and Chris and Red Pill Junkie, not the Roswell Slides. You're in the Paracast. Not just an alternative to the mainstream media. We're the premier independent talk radio network. We are GCN. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a -a thrill-a-minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors. Classic science fiction at its best. Available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R O C K O I D S.com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS, 1-800-425-4610, or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. 
With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855-340-SAVE, 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System system today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. This is Kurt Seven, the author of UFO Mysteries, and you're listening to the Paracast. With Gene and Chris and Red Pill Junkie, we're trying to figure out the Roswell slide. So you have this major auditorium. It holds, what, 10,000 people? Yeah, right. 10,000 seats. And they obviously charge for the tickets. Now, we're not going to translate completely from pesos to American dollars, but something like $20 to $100 a seat. Is that about right? Yeah, eighty three, eighty five dollars the, the most expensive. How, how many ones. people ended up showing up? Do you know? Was there a count? Well, I tried to gauge how many people were while I, while the the event was running, and then I read some of the newspapers who covered the story. So, based on on, on the figures, they those newspapers claim, you know, and obviously those maybe are conservative figures, but I will say that between 6,500 to 7,000 people attended the event. Now, how fancy was it? Okay, so this is a fancy place, fancy concerts. Mm -hmm. Major entertainers are appearing there. How fancy was this presentation? Well, I mean, the, the sound was... Top notch. Uh, they they didn't really require that much uh, sophistication when it comes to lighting, right? You know, they're just uh, lighting people speaking on stage. You know, they, they, you you don't have any kind of musical instruments or whatever. Uh, but then again, they, they were also showing all these uh, videos on screen, and they also had. Mausan promised he will have a quote-unquote hologram of the alien that will come alive and walk on stage. And uh, the moment, when I I heard that, and I, I imagined it will be something like uh, the hologram of Tupac in Coachella giving a concert. You know, some some years uh, uh, ago, I thought, oh well, that that's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, but then again, it wasn't really that impressive. How long did this entire event take? Oh, it was long. It started around 7.30 and it ended way after midnight. Oh, boy. Yeah, by the end of it, my butt was begging for some disclosure. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I don't know if I'd be able to handle it. You know, I think after two hours, I kind of flake out. But, you know, we'll go into that. The key being here, it's a long event. And was it just a constant presentation of information about this or what? How do they pad it out to be five hours or so? Yeah, I mean, I, I first uh, at first I thought it was, it was only going to be uh, two hours, maybe two and a half at the most. But then after the first two hours when the slides hadn't been shown yet, then I, I started to think, well, maybe this is going to take longer. And only by after the third hour, 
is that uh, they show the slides. But before that, at first, well, uh, Jaime Maussan opened uh, the event. You know, he received received a, a big ovation from the crowd. He he gave a speech, you know, saying about well, his usual thing about uh, that the, that every, uh, he said, quote unquote. Fi- Finally, we have the evidence we, we, we've we been waiting for all this time. He started to say about how modern science is still speculating about the probability of life in the universe, not, on, not only intel, intelligent life, even biological life. He ma- mentioned Miguel Alcubierre, you know, that famous astrophysicist who has tried to come up with a theoretical model for a, a, a working warp drive that will enable a spaceship to transverse large distances between the stars and starting to say that, he said, we welcome criticism and, and, and all questioning about the, the, present, the evidence we're going to give and all that. And after that, he, the, the next person on, on stage, well, actually, all the present the, the, the speakers uh, remain on stage all the time. They were all, si- all sitting in some kind of uh, small uh, space in one of the corners of the, of the stage where they put some chairs and whatnot. So they stay on, the, uh, on, on stage all the time, and one by one they, they st- stood up and, and, and went to the podium. So the first person after Mausan was uh, James Hurtak, who, uh, I'm sorry to say, I, I have never heard of him. And uh, they say that he uh, worked with uh, the late uh, John Mack in the investigation of that famous um, uh, close encounters on that uh, African school. That, uh, that was, I think it was 20 years ago, actually. So he gave some kind of speech that, in my opinion, was quite eloquent, but I, I really didn't understand what he was doing there, you know, because he, I, I don't think he was involved in the investigation surrounding the slide. You know, he was just giving some kind of speech about brothers and sisters, get ready and reclaim your place in history and prepare for the future for humanity's destiny in the cosmos and all that. And okay, very interesting. But for a moment, I think it was just like filler, you know, I was about to say padding, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Some kind of padding. And after that, they had a Skype connection with uh, Paul Hellyer, who was in Canada. And he also gave uh, a a speech in in the similar tone, how the slides were going to be uh, the nail in the coffin of skeptics and liars and all that. Um, let me see here. And uh, he spoke about some 15 minutes, you know, talking about uh, actually the, the, the feedback in the, in, during his uh, Skype session was pretty lousy. For, uh, it was kind of hard to listen to him. So he said, you know, it, it's time for the truth embargo to be lifted. We must insist that our, that our gods tell us the truth. We must change the paradigm a paradigm of peace and co- we must move towards a paradigm of peace and cooperation and all that, you know, a, a very elegant message. And uh, I'm sure that the, the people on the stage, they enjoyed it because I'm not really sure if many of them had listened to Mr. Hellier before. All right. But how long did it take before they actually started to present something as mm. opposed to all these introductions? Well, I think that at least at least one and a half to three hours. That two and a half hours before Excuse the first me? slide. Yeah. Okay, so basically before anything meaningful is presented, it's half the show. But well, did, yeah. during the point did they at least explain the background of the slides? Oh yes. Uh, after that uh, Skype station with Hale, it was a turn of um Don Schmidt and Tom Carey, and they devoted about 30 minutes to explain the basic uh, backbone of the Roswell case, you know, and they started to talk about all the, the big players in the case, you know, Mac Brazel, Jesse Marcel, and all that. 
And once again, you will say, well, they are stalling, you know, they're, like you said, padding before the big reveal. But then again, I think that it was necessary for the people in order to fill them in on maybe not not everyone is was as knowledgeable about the Roswell case as will be uh, people in the United States. Okay, the big question, of course, is still, mm-hmm. were they ever able to make any connection at all between this stuff and Roswell? Well, like you, like I said, after uh, Carrie and Schmidt, it was the turn of Adam Dew, and that's how uh, he started to, to tell the story of, of, of the slides themselves, right? And uh, they started to talk about Hilda Blair Ray and all, the, also the things that I had mentioned earlier about how the, the slides were found. Uh, apparently, they also found people who knew Hilda Blair and they interviewed those people and started to say about what kind of person she was. And uh, also, Adam, you mentioned uh, a screen graph from an email exchange he had with some a person living in Minnesota who claimed also to have known Hilda Blair. And uh, the person mentioned that the Blairs were friends with uh, Barbara Bush and George Bush Sr. So once again, you know, they're trying to make the case. These two people were very, very well connected with the, what you will call the hoi polloi of American elite in the 1940s, 1950s. Therefore, it could be possible that they had access to a very classified or sensitive material. We got more to come about not the Roswell slides with Red Pill Junkie and Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracas. <laughs> We are the premier independent talk radio network. The Genesis Communications Network. G-C-N. Attention, do you owe money to the IRS or have years of unfiled returns? Are you being audited or receiving threatening letters? If the answer is yes, you need help. The IRS can seize your property and assets, impose fines and penalties, garnish your wages, and even go after your bank account. Don't take on the IRS by yourself. Don't let the IRS destroy your life. Take action now. Call our team of experts for a free and confidential initial evaluation. We've helped thousands resolve their tax problems. Let us help you. 800-261-7073. 800-261-7073. We the people. People grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, and carting to a private bank, having it lent back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Hi, Ted Anderson. I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. You've heard them on Alex Jones. You've seen them on Ancient Aliens. Now come see them live at Contact in the Desert 2015 in Joshua Tree this May. Experience four full days of science-centered lectures, workshops, intensives, and field work on ancient astronauts, extraterrestrial intelligence, human origins, crop circles, contact experiences, UFO sightings, and more. Meet Chariots of the Gods author Eric Von Daniken, Ancient Aliens host Giorgio A. Sokolos, New York Times bestselling author David Wilcock, Dead Dog. Doctors Don't Lie author Dr. Joel Wallach, astronauts Edgar Mitchell and Story Musgrave, Earth Files publisher Linda Moulton Howe, author Jim Mars, and many of the world's most respected researchers and scientists exploring answers to one of the greatest questions of all time. More speakers, more panels, more things to do. Join us at the Joshua Tree Retreat Center, which has a long history of sightings and contact experiences. For advanced tickets and conference schedule, go to contactinthedesert.com. That is contactinthedesert.com. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. With Gene and Chris, Chris being somewhere on the road to his home in Arizona, and from Mexico, Red Pill Junkie. And Miguel, of course, attended 
the Roswell slides or not the Roswell slides presentation. He wasn't given free seats, I don't think. No. <laughs> okay. And we're trying to dissect what's going on here. So this portion of the show, they're trying to explain who these people were. Of course, they brought in Tom Carey and Donald Schmidt, who have obviously written books about Roswell. Hmm. We also had Richard Dolan, but he was on the sidelines. He didn't actually participate, did he? He was the one in charge of uh, wrapping up the event. You know, it was until the very end. I, he, I think that he spoke for 20, 30 minutes. And if he really, he didn't really devote a lot of time talking about the, the slides. He did admit that the chain of custody in the slides was... Uh, far from perfect, that there were a lot of questions surrounding the, the, the provenance. Uh, uh, but he, he said that uh, what he hoped for the slides is to have some kind of ripple effect and try to, to undermine the wall of silence that is, covering, uh, that is uh, protecting the, the UFO secret uh, from the, uh, uh, within the, the secret government that is... Uh, has, has been with, uh, withholding uh, this information from the American public and the whole world. So, and he also gave these, uh, his thoughts about uh, disclosure, what happens next if, uh, 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 if the slides turn out to be genuine, what will happen in a, in a world after disclosure. Um, let me also point out, uh, Gene, that I didn't attend the Roswell event alone, I asked one of my cousins who is very interested also in the UFO phenomenon to, to join me. And the reason I did so was twofold. Uh, one, well, I didn't want to go alone. And two, I wanted to have an unfiltered opinion from someone who is a smart person interested in the topic and who may, obviously wasn't as immersed in the controversy surrounding the slides as I was. And then after the event was over, I asked him, you know, well, what do you think? Were you convinced? What? And he said he found everything to be very interesting. And he particularly was very interested by Dolan's words. He also hoped, as Dolan, that the slides will have that kind of uh, ripple effect toward uh, the uh, disclosure. Now, just in retrospect here, we're not going to go into much of this more until the end of the segment. And that is the reaction I'm seeing is none too favorable. You know, I'm looking over Kevin Randall's blog and I don't see the people who would be in there to defend it like blogger Anthony McBregalia, who had spent quite a bit of space talking up this thing, suddenly the event occurs and he's not anywhere to be found in Kevin Randall's blog. He's not responding. Just about everything we see there, and you know you've participated as I have, is a criticism of some sort. Yeah, definitely. I think that 99, well, maybe 100% of the people participating in those blogs and I think in, in English websites, have been extremely critical of the whole event, and they are completely. They have been completely underwhelmed by the so-called evidence that they showed. Now there is a survey at the site run by a certain all-night radio show, which we will not mention because I want to give them publicity. <laughs> and they have one of the slides up there, and the questions are simple: three questions. Do you believe it? Do you disbelieve it? Or are you not sure? Now, when you add the disbelief to the one saying not sure, you get something like 73 to 75 percent. The rest believe it. Now, this is to a radio show that tends to cater to people who believe it. Mm -hmm. So if these people are voting that they don't know or don't believe it, that doesn't augur well. Let me ask you about this. Since your cousin was there, you were there. Could you get a sense, and this is one of the questions from forum.theparacast.com in our question bank, one of the questions from one of our 
esteemed, highly esteemed regulars over there. And that is the crowd attending who they are, what they seem to be there for, what the mood is. Did you get a sense of the crowd? Did, was it all older people, young people, a mixture, what? Well, I think it was a mixture. <laughs> I, I, actually, my cousin was kind of surprised, as I was, that there were so many, like uh, he said, old ladies attending, right? <laughs> it was kind of surprising. And there were also a few younger people. And maybe probably the bulk were in, in, in the middle age, you know, the 40s, 50s, you know, people like myself, I assume that uh, most of the people attending this event, they were in their teens when the famous UFO flap of the 1990s was occurring. And back in those years, Jaime Maussan was at the forefront of the, the investigation of the, uh, of the flap and showing videos taken by, by citizens with uh, the camcorders of those days on, on national television. And I'm sure that many of those people are still uh, supporting Maussan, and that's why they went and, and, and they uh, responded to his uh, summoning you know, at the National Auditorium. So his general reputation in Mexico is pretty solid then? It's a mixture. It's a mixed bag. I think that some people um, have lost faith in his credibility. Uh, I, I, I must admit, I'm one of those people. Uh, back in the nineties, I idolized the man. You know, I think I mentioned that uh, the first sure. time I was at the Paradigm. You know, uh, I remember that when we saw him on, on TV and some of the skeptics of those years, you know, trying to question him and trying to argue with him, you know, uh, the, 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 the people supporting him will boo and will, uh, will always cheer whenever he replied back. So, uh, but uh, as the years progressed, um, many of the cases that he supported and he showed, uh, they, they were shown to be... Uh, hoaxes right so uh, i was i was at first i thought that there weren't going to be as many people as the, are, 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 are the ones who attended the the event i think well maybe you know a couple of thousands will come but it will be mostly empty but no i, I was i was proven wrong you know the, the man still got it <laughs> was there a lot of advertising retail advertising for this or just coverage in the news columns Maussan was involved in a very heavy and active promotion campaign. He uh, promoted the event in uh, several radio stations in Mexico. I listened to a couple of them, you know, most, mostly radio stations aimed at the younger crowd. And yeah, people were very supporting, well, very, very expectant of, of the, the evidence that we, he was going to show. So, uh, the, it was that, and and a, and a few articles in newspapers uh, also uh, promoting the event. So I'm not sure if he. I'm. Sus I suspect that he also appeared on television a couple of times. I'm sure he did, because obviously he still is uh, involved with Televisa, who is that, is, which is the the biggest uh, TV TV uh, uh, channel. TV news uh, organiza TV organization in Mexico. So I'm sure he was uh, also promoting the event on TV. But since I, I, I stopped watching TV some years ago, uh, I'm not able to confirm that. Okay, we've got Red Pill Chunky with Gene and Chris. We're talking about not the Roswell slides, you're in the barricade. <laughs> There's a man named Dr. Joel Wallach who is anything but your typical doctor, both a veterinarian and naturopathic physician. Doc asks, why does the United States spend more money on health care by far and still rank 50th in health and longevity worldwide? He believes that people should empower themselves with a basic understanding of nutrition, take charge of their health, and attain optimal health and longevity through nutrition, not by toxic prescription drugs that lead to side effects and more toxic prescription drugs. 
Doc Wallach's message is resonating with an increasing number of Americans who are waking up to all the big government, big pharma, and big insurance manipulation of our health care system. I'm George Dory, and I like what Doc Wallach is saying and doing to enlighten people about health care. Visit criticalhealthnews.com and listen to Dr. Wallach's Deadly Recipes Lecture. It makes a lot of sense, and I urge you to join our Critical Health News team. Go to criticalhealthnews.com. That's criticalhealthnews.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Right now is the time to jumpstart your health with a new 30% discount from InfoWarsHealth.com. Secure the all-new Tangy Tangerine 2.0 with certified organic ingredients that are non-GMO and better tasting than ever for an exclusive 30% off discount when you sign up at InfoWarsHealth.com. That's 30% off retail when you become a distributor at InfoWarsHealth.com. You've heard me talk about Tangy Tangerine for years now, and you've heard others talk about what it's done for them. Take the challenge. Try it for the first time. Or even re- Reorder your Tangy Tangerine and other great Longevity products like Pollen Burst or the Alex Pack, all for 30% off when you visit InfoWarsHealth.com. This is a fantastic opportunity to be able to try out the hundreds of amazing products at InfoWarsHealth.com and get 30% off on products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine 2.0. Visit InfoWarsHealth.com to get started today. You can also sign up for auto ship and get free shipping. 30% off and free shipping. It's all available exclusively at InfoWarsHealth.com today. Normal blood pressure naturally how would that make you feel i'm don from new mexico january of 2000 i had a heart attack then my real health began going downhill and i had uh, high blood pressure high blood sugar poor vision and i really wasn't sleeping well i was a mess pretty much don reports dramatic improvements with heart and body extract i started taking uh, heart and body extract and from within a few days i started sleeping a lot better my blood pressure uh, normalized my blood sugar normalized and uh, my sleep really did improve experience these benefits and more when your body gets what it needs with the assistance of heart and body extract order at hbextract.com or call 866-295-5305 that's hbextract.com or call 866-295-5305 and folks i did not expect this at all by the seventh eighth and ninth day i saw dramatic improvements from taking heart and body extract details at hbextract.com or call 866-295-5305 for heart and body extract We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Roswell Slides, not the Roswell Slides. Gene and Chris, we have Red Pill Junkie, Miguel, who actually paid for a ticket went there with his cousin to see this five-hour event. We're kind of getting a little background here, a little color background about the advertising, about the people who attended. We have a question from Robert, sometimes known as Burnt State, who's been on the show and Mm -hmm. is a very frequent poster on our forums with nearly 3,200 messages. And he'll do just as many tomorrow. Okay, first question. Who was there that you didn't expect to see? I guess the 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 one I didn't expect to see was uh, James James Hortak, who, like I said, I uh, I didn't know about until until May the fifth. I really uh, couldn't really understand uh, his involvement in in this whole affair. Any notable absentees? Well, Paul Hellyer was brought there by Skype. 
Who mm -hmm. did you expect to be there or who was advertised as being there who didn't show? Oh, uh, Dr. Edgar Mitchell. You know, that was, along with Richard Dolan, the, 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 the one person I was really hoping to see on stage, you know. But unfortunately, he uh, was forbidden to travel to Mexico by his doctor uh, due to health health issues. I mean, he's 84, 84 years old, of, uh, after all. And I think it's fair to say that he has traveled more, more than most of us, you know, lifetimes combined, right? So he wasn't there, but Mausan recorded an interview with him at his home in New Mexico, and he showed him the slides and showed uh, the reactions he had of it, you know, and, and he said, well, they looked like the one of the groups of, uh, of extraterrestrials visiting our planets. It seems that it, the, the features correspond with what the people in, in the Roswell story claim to see. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying he gave a 100 percent endorsement of it, but, you know, uh, he didn't say, well, this is a this is not a this is not an alien body. This is a mummy or something, you know. Okay, next question. This one semi-serious. Did you see any aliens in the crowd or on the screen? I guess <laughs> you only see them on the screen if the slides show an alien. Man, well, maybe some people will think that I was an alien. You know, I mean, at six foot four, I kind of stand out in the Mexican crowd. But no, I didn't see anyone with more than five fingers on his hand on their hands <laughs> okay well maybe they were wearing gloves you couldn't tell exactly no, no 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 big edits skinny ass four-fingered uh, bug eye dude uh, no and unfortunately no hot venusian babes either <laughs> oh man <laughs> you throw a good party and none of the the special guests show up I mean, what <laughs> The last question, did you know that www.rpj.com is available? I shouldn't have said that because someone's <laughs> going to get it. Yeah. And they'll say, Red Pill Junkie, I'll sell it to you for $1,000. Then they can keep it because <laughs> no, way, no way I can afford that much. It's worth nine ninety nine if you can get it, okay? Mm. That's it. <laughs> okay, I have to think about it. Okay, so... We have this introduction, takes forever. Finally, the first slide is shown. Let me point out the second slide did not appear until just about the end. We'll go into that in a moment. Okay, mm -hmm. so these slides have already been, at least the first one, revealed in rather low resolution form online for a while. There was mm -hmm. no surprise there, right? Well, not for me anyway, you know. I the slides were definitely more needed. More, uh, the features of, of the body were uh, much, much clearer. Uh, but uh, it was the same slides, right? It, it, it was the same body uh, propped inside some ki kind of uh, glass showcase, you know, the same position. And so uh, to me, there wasn't any, any kind of surprise. Uh, I don't know about uh, uh, the people attending. And obviously, I didn't show the slides to my cousin. I never sent him some kind of link to say, look, this is the things that we're, they're going to show, because that would have been a major spoiler. So, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you see it, the big reveal. Could you pick out any details that gave you any clues about anything? Obviously, you're not an anthropologist. You're not a scientist. So you're giving a layman's opinion. Well, the head look kind of interesting. You know, the, the size of the eyes, the, 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 the shape of the mouth, what the, 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 the apparent lack of a protruding nose, and all that, the fact that you couldn't really see uh, a very defined hand and all that. So uh, it was it was an odd body. That that's 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 all I could say. You know, it was peculiar. I guess it's the word I'm trying to say. 
And well, obviously the fact that it was shown in some kind of showcase, you know, it, it reinforced my suspicion that the photo was taken in some kind of museum instead of uh, uh, some kind of secret hangar base or something. And also the fact that the, the body was some kind of put over some type of uh, cloth or, 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 or blanket or something that, uh, you, instead of, I don't know, I, th I guess uh, uh, we're being spoiled by, by, by the assumptions of, of, of popular TV and say, okay, if they have alien bodies, they will surely keep them in some kind of liquid nitrogen or something, right? I mean, after all, you well, yeah, but not on a blanket under a glass case. Yeah. It, just, it sounds wrong. Yeah. I mean, if, if this was a genuine uh, extraterrestrial body, then, then you are talking about the most ba valuable biological specimen in, all, in, all, in the whole history, you know, the most uh, valuable uh, object in the yeah, whole world. Yeah, you keep it on an army blanket? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you will keep it away from uh, light, away from from oxygen. You know, completely secure. Also, I assume that any physicians worth their salt would want to quarantine this creature in case it has alien viruses or something. You can't yeah. just have people there without wearing some kind of hazmat uniform. I don't know what they had back in the late 40s. But you would think that they would take precautions so as not to infect people. This is an alien. This is from who knows where. Mm -hmm. You can't just leave it out in the open. I mean, we'll go into that in a moment. Who is that person in the blue dress? The devil in the blue dress? <laughs> More to come with Gene and Chris and Red Pill Chunky. You're in... largest independently owned communications network GCN Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that too in Graphic Converter. Also print catalogs. Convert from so many formats I can't even list them. Download now to see if Graphic Converter is good for you, like one and a half million other users. Guess what? You could save money when you buy Graphic Converter. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL to get a special price for Graphic Converter. Go to LemkeSoft.com. That's L-E-M-K-E-Soft.com. LemkeSoft.com. L-E-M-K-E-Soft.com. KDArmor.com is your one-stop shop for the most affordable body armor, period. With packages starting at $169.99 and free shipping on every order, KD offers soft armor and rifle threat rated armor up to level 4. Go to KDArmor.com and get your body armor today while you still can. Mention this ad and receive a free tactical scarf for a limited time with any body armor package. That's KDArmor.com. Come and take it. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy and get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional installation. You control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV 
Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. If you constantly feel run down and tired, your pH level might be low and your body could be full of toxins. If what you drink is not at a pH level of 8 or higher, you are inviting bacteria and acid to thrive in your body. But there is something you can do. Simply add 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops to your water to help your body rid itself of acidic waste, increase oxygen, and raise your pH balance to optimum levels. AlkaVision Plasma pH drops combine a unique formula of the most alkaline minerals in the world. Alkalizing the water you drink, ridding your body of acidic waste and toxins, and helping you regain energy and vibrant health. And studies show viruses, bacteria, and toxins cannot survive in an alkaline, high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. Hi, this is Bryce Abel. I'm the producer of Dark Skies, the co-author of AD After Disclosure, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Chris is sounding a little bit digital these days because he has become a digital person. Oh, seriously, (laughs) he's on the road with his iPhone, and he's doing the best we can. Red Pill Junkie, Miguel, from Mexico, is here the well-known paranormal blogger who agreed to come here to tell us about his experiences attending the great event, Be a Witness to the Roswell Reveal. I'm looking here at a low-resolution photo from Open Mind's site. Mm-hmm. And as you say, it looks like some kind of museum exhibit on some kind of blanket. There's also some kind of label there that you can't see in this slide. We'll get into that in a moment. And then you see what looks like a woman with a blouse and a blue dress, the devil in the blue dress, or the devil in the details. So it's bad enough that she's not wearing a uniform to protect herself from alien viruses. Does anyone theorize who she might be? Maybe Eisenhower or something? (laughs) (laughs) Maybe it was J. Edgar Hoover, you know? (laughs) I understand he did that sort of thing, yeah. (laughs) Also, uh, if someone is watching the, 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 the image in, on their computer screen, look to the thing that is behind the alien body. You know, that thing that is on the left side that looks like some kind of wolf. Some people are calling it the wolf, wolfman head. Uh, Nick Redfern on his blog pointed it out. And I also, uh, uh, it also caught my eye yesterday, and I tweeted and say, "Well, what's up with that? You know, did they also keep dead dead Bigfoots in that in that uh, Air Force hangar?" The location is screwy as anything. And it's not a medical table. That bothers me. It looks like something that wasn't just dissected the day before. That it was there for many years, and this mm-hmm. slide was taken in 1947. If this is the Roswell creature, did exposure to our atmosphere age it immediately? Yeah, or maybe one of the things that uh, Salse uh, Benavides uh, mentioned in his uh, presentation, Salse Benitez, sorry, is that uh, in his opinion, the yellow ochre coloration in the body was maybe probably the result of... uh, some kind of exposure to formaldehyde or something. All right. Now let's look at this here. Now you had supposed experts testifying during this presentation as to what that creature was and why it can't be a mummy, which is another theory. It's a mummy, a mummy Mm -hmm. of a child. Mm -hmm. And I've seen other photos of mummies of children that are not dissimilar. So were they extraterrestrials too? Well, the guy, like I said, he went uh, point by point giving uh, his reasons why, uh, in his opinion, the body was not of a child. For ex- uh, and he, it wasn't also um, a desiccated mummy. He, said, he's, he mentioned that with mummies, 
the ocular globes of the uh, of the eyes uh, get to recede inside the sockets of the skull and that's not the case with, with this specimen and he also said uh, that the body had six ribs on the rib cage that is com- not not according to uh, human anatomy did that the the bones of the wrist were also not appar- apparent that the el- the body bones of the elbow was anomalous that the length of the bone from the you know from the collar of the uh, of the shoulder to the elbow was not according to 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 uh, uh, a, a normal human body so he said that uh, he went through through all the 8000 8, rare congenital syndromes that are uh, recorded by uh, the world health organization and 455 dimorphisms produced by uh, uh, illnesses. So he went and discarded them one by one in his uh, study. And apparently the guy spent two months studying this this single image alone. And then he came to the opinion that uh, the body was not compatible with human life. Now, we don't know that's a body. It could be something somebody prepared for a science fiction film. Mm-hmm. We don't Although, know that it was ever anything that actually lived. Yeah, uh, well, the second person who gave a, a scientific testimony was uh, Richard Doble, who uh, they gave their resume on screen, and he's apparently some kind of retiree academician who studied at the University of Toronto and Torino. He was a, a, a college professor in several universities. He, he has studied uh, uh, the anatomy of, of, of vertebral spined animals and primate anatomy and comparison of evolution and whatnot. So he said, he more or less uh, reaffirmed what, what Salste had already said. And, uh, he said that it was not a human child, and he also said that it, it probably wasn't some kind of mannequin. You know, the argument was that in order to produce some that kind of uh, mannequin, it would have required a great amount of ex- expertise in, in biology and comparative anatomy. So he, his argument was that what the body show was some kind of uh, convergent evolution. It wasn't uh, a, a primate, but it was something that had evolved in in the, in the same the same way that we human beings had in in this planet. Hmm. All right. So they're painting a picture here that sort of kind of makes sense that they can't attribute this to being a human person and they're trying to at least come up with explanations as to why they think it was once a real human being. Now, they say six ribs, and I'm trying to count six ribs here, and I'm looking at the blow-up, and this one's from theblackfault.com. And I I can't count six ribs here. What am I missing? Well, the guy says six ribs... And possibly a seventh one that wasn't visible because of the cloth covering the neck. They suspected that maybe the the, the head was removed from the from the neck. So well, the, the also pointed out to the anomalies in the pelvis bones. You know, so, so in their in their opinion, uh, this being. Uh, Seems, didn't seem to have some kind of uh, uh, definitive, uh, definite um, gender, you know, a sex. They couldn't point out whether it was a male or a female. Okay, you know, we are going to bring on a surprise guest in just a moment, so just hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, as we prepare to wrap up this segment of the Paracast, we're joined here by someone else who was actually present on the stage I guess, of the Roswell Slides presentation in Mexico, and that's Richard Dolan. Richard, fast welcome to the Paracast. We have about one minute left of this segment, and then we'll have you on for another 10 minutes or so. 
So before we go on, thank you very much for taking the time. My pleasure, Gene. We've been ragging on this a little bit, as you might expect. A lot of people have. I have no doubt. Now, before we go on, just a very brief summary. Do you think it's really worth further investigation? Um, I do. I do. Look, I'm not endorsing these slides. I just want to make that very clear right at the outset. And and I'm not debunking them either. Um, I I think that there's a few pieces of information that have not been made available to the public. They were on the live stream, but apparently everyone missed it. And that was uh, analyses provided by three particular scientists, two of whom were Spanish speaking, who gave, in my opinion, very detailed physiological analyses of, of the body in question. We'll get and into that in the next segment because we were talking about that thing. with Miguel Red Pill Junkie. Getting into that presentation, I want to get into more of that with you. Richard Dolan is going to be here for one more segment with Red Pill Junkie and Gene and Chris. You're in. <laughs> independent-minded. The Genesis Communications Network, GCN. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light Systems system today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. Friends, this is Alex Jones for MidasResources.com. For more than 15 years, I have exclusively used Midas Resources for all my precious metal needs. Whether it's bullion or collectibles you're looking for, Midas Resources is simply the best. I own my gold as a hedge against inflation. This Federal Reserve fiat currency could go the way of the Deutschmark and the Weimar Republic anytime. In these historically dangerous times, it makes sense to physically hold gold and silver. Midas already has some of the best deals in the industry. But if you give them a call and mention the radio special, they will give you a list of the day's super specials. Midas brokers are standing by to answer all your questions at 800-686-2237. They also have a lot of informative free literature explaining the opportunities and risk of holding precious metals. They are ready to answer your questions at 800-686-2237. Again, that's 800-686-2237. The Genesis Communications Network is one of America's premier broadcasters of captivating talk radio. We thank you for listening. Now, Now, just imagine there are thousands of people who are just as passionate about radio as you are. But what you may not realize is how easy and affordable it is to advertise with us. Radio commercials for your business could be heard on hundreds of radio stations across the U.S. every day. We can help you by creating an effective radio advertising campaign for your company. From script writing to producing your commercial, just like the one you're listening to right now. No other network provides the level of customer service we do. When it comes to radio advertising, we are your one-stop shop. And no matter how big or small your business is, we can help. Email us and advertise at GCNlive.com. And an experienced advertising executive will help you take the first step towards driving more customers to your business or website. Advertise at GCNlive.com. Easy, affordable, effective. Jerome K. 
Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. So we have a surprise addition to this week's episode of the Paracast, Richard Dolan, longtime UFO researcher and historian, who joins us. And as I said, Red Pill Junkie was explaining this presentation, why the body you see in the picture cannot possibly be a mummy or something like that. Is that what impressed you most about everything, forgetting everything else, Richard? Um, I think so. I mean, I... um I had a long bit of hesitation before agreeing to come down to do the event. Uh, I will just say that. But I agreed to after I had uh, long conversations with Don Schmidt, who I, I, I some people like to criticize Don. I don't get that. I, I love Don. I think he's an excellent researcher. And um, and then Tony Bergaglia, who I don't think a lot of people know about, but I've, I've long respected Tony's work. Uh, he keeps kind of a low profile in the field, but he wrote a lot about this um, over the past couple of years. And after talking with them, I thought, well, they have reason to think that there's there's something there. And for me to turn down an opportunity to look at at something that's on the front line, I mean, my attitude is this. If, if I'm supposed to be investigating a mystery and I decline to look at something that I think is genuinely intriguing, then what am I even bothering for? Um, so I wanted to go. I wanted to see it firsthand. I wanted to, to be there. When I arrived in Mexico City, I met with Jaime Musan and um, – immediately was able to see the uh, high res images of the slides not the physical slides but you know good high res versions of them and those were interesting to me and i i, I have not been an expert in in uh, mummies and and um that i i will uh, freely agree that those slides and i told this to, to the guys as well that uh, the images at least on the face of it look like they're museum pieces i, I have no problem with that assessment i think that they do. But the issue is when you reconstruct the body or when they reconstructed the body based on the testimony of, uh, let's see, three individuals. One is Dr. Luis Antonio de Alba Galindo. He was there. I met him. Jose Benitez, who's a forensics expert with uh, the uh, Mexican military. I'm trying to read the Spanish here. And then a Canadian, uh, Richard Doble, who uh, also, I, I really seem like very much an expert in forensics and physiology. I listened to the testimony of all three of them. And look, I'm just going to say that I, I, I don't believe that a single one of the critics that I've encountered has listened to any of those three gentlemen. I, I don't think any of them have been listened to. And, and partly it's not their fault because when the live stream was done, a, the translations were not always good from what I understand, and then B, it got cut out during the whole second half, which was when all of those presentations were done. Oh, boy, so, that doesn't, that so doesn't that, work that was, at all. And that was just a technical glitch. I don't think that was anticipated by anyone, but it, it really did detract from the presentation. Now, again, I, uh, I think that the dating of the slides is very solid. The, I, I don't really think that anyone's going to be able to argue persuasively that the slides are not from the late 1940s. Basically, from 1947, 1949 is when they've been nailed down. I, don't, I think that's solid. I don't think anyone – there are some people who are arguing it's a hoax, which I think is absurd. I even heard a comment that someone said the picture was intentionally blurred, which is, I think, total nonsense as well. So I think the images are certainly genuine, and the question is, what what are they? There is an interesting connection that uh, Adam Dew and um, it was basically Adam Dew found with with Hilda Ray and Bernard Ray, which is to the Eisenhowers. Uh, that's probably true. Also to the Bush family. This is a couple that really did get around. They were well connected. That doesn't prove that they were um, therefore able to get access to alien bodies, of course. But on the other hand. It could be conceivable. One might imagine that this could be the case. The real question is, does the body upon analysis turn out to be human or not human? What Jaime Musan did is he gathered or was able to help together three uh, specialists. This was their conclusion that it was not human. Now, I, you know, I, I listened to them. They're very specific about their arguments as to why it is not a mummy. I don't feel like I'm in a position to argue with these guys. So on that basis, I think it's interesting. And what I've been saying to that, that team all along, and I'm not a member of that team, but I've, 
I'm friendly with them. And I've been saying all along that what you've got to do, put up a website, get all of the translations up on that site. So everyone in the English speaking community who's turning this whole thing into like an Armageddon can at least read the analysis. And if you're going to debunk it, start with those, in my opinion. And if that gets debunked, then I would just say, let's move on. But if, if critics are going to criticize these slides without looking at those specific arguments, and I, I, I can't really sanction that. What I've been saying all along is that I seriously doubt these slides could ever be considered proof of anything. They're slides. They're not the actual body. So that's a problem there. There's always going to be a question of provenance. And on those two bases alone, they're not ever going to be considered proof to certain people. But I've also felt that debunking them might be a real challenge. Now, the one way to debunk them is to prove that that's a child mummy. What I would like to see would be a qualified expert, a truly qualified expert, not some armchair person. There's a lot of those chiming in these days. But someone who actually knows the field who can say definitively, no, the ribs are actually fine. Uh, no, the tendons are actually fine. It's typical of a child mummy. Then, then you know, we got a couple of those in there. Then I would certainly... Um, agree that you know they're not they're not anything other than an interesting mummy miguel you have a question of richard dolan uh yeah i do uh, uh first hi richard you know it's a pleasure miguel good Richard's to hear from speaking you. with you uh, my question was um, whether you had the chance to to talk to, uh, at, at length uh, and maybe even privately with either jose de jesus salse benitez or dr luis uh, de alba galindo the problem that I had in talking with them is that their English was very limited and my Spanish was very limited. And I tried. I mean, I met with both of them. Um, you know, they both, they're both, um, particularly Jose Benitez. Um, I did have like little bits of chat here and there, but spent some time in the room with him and I, I seemed to like him and I, I, we seemed to get along fine, but we really couldn't have a communication, unfortunately. I was able to listen to both of their lectures live during translation and before they spoke, I had become familiar with what they were talking about anyway after having conversations with, um, with Jaime Musan about it uh, and he pretty accurately netted down what, what their arguments were and, and then during the event, I was able to listen to them through English translation. For unfortunately, I couldn't really talk with them any more than that. Okay. Uh, yeah, my second just... question would be: What was uh, your general impression of them? You know, it, it seemed to me, you know, being in, in the audience listening, that uh, Salse Benitez was open-minded but neutral. You know, in, in, in the whole thing about uh, UFOs and aliens, at least prior to to getting involved with that. That is exactly sites. what I agree with that. And yet his, if you recall, his analysis, well, I'd like to know what you think. I thought his analysis was very, very forthright, and he seemed very confident in his conclusions. His qualifications seemed strong to me as well. So I, I have to say I thought Jose Benitez was, was quite impressive. I mean, I don't mind saying that. Now, that doesn't mean that I think he can't be uh, disputed or even debunked. I don't know. But again, um, my frustration with the critics has simply been no one has mentioned his testimony or his analysis and um, and no one has mentioned the analysis of Dr. Luis Antonio de Alba Galindo. I had a very good uh, vibe on both of them when I met them, um, particularly Jose Salsa Benitez. I mean, um, I liked him. Yeah, my, my impression of Alba Galindo was that he certainly seemed to be more uh, on the deliver camp, you know, and my own personal take is that he seemed to be have been uh, extrapolating way more uh, things about the slides than what uh, I think uh, someone should be comfortable with. You know, the idea that he's mentioned how, in his opinion, the body showed that it had evolved in uh, in some kind of uh, atmosphere in in a place without atmosphere. You know, some kind of you know without any kind of gravity and how they, they say that uh, he seemed to be some kind I of... I recall this, and I, I agree that was a real stretch. And there's just yeah. no point to go there. The Canadian uh, forensic uh, scientist, Richard Doble, who spoke out of his home on Skype, I actually thought was quite interesting also. He, he, went to, he tended to speculate a little more than I would have yeah. liked, but his Definitely. technical information I thought was, was still interesting. And in line, I thought, with, uh, with the other two gentlemen... So, so this is why, like, as soon as that, that conference ended, 
I mean, I, I'll freely admit at the end of it, I thought this is actually the beginnings of maybe what might be a consensus. And so I was, I was actually very happy to say it. I spoke to some media in the aftermath that, um, look, you know, this is, the, this could be the beginning of a consensus and only time will tell. And I said this many times, uh, whether it will be or not. And what we now need are, um, are other qualified individuals to have access to the same data. Richard Dolan is spending a few minutes with us with Red Pill Junkie and Gene and Chris. You're in. Independently leading the way for the nation. Compelling talk for every political persuasion. We are GCN. Attention, do you owe money to the IRS or have years of unfiled returns? Are you being audited or receiving threatening letters? If the answer is yes, you need help. The IRS can seize your property and assets, impose fines and penalties, garnish your wages, and even go after your bank account. Don't take on the IRS by yourself. Don't let the IRS destroy your life. Take action now. Call our team of experts for a free and confidential initial evaluation. We've helped thousands resolve their tax problems. Let us help you. 800-261-7073. 800-261-7073. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Hi, my name is DeRay, suffering from migraines, having Botox injections in my head and neck to alleviate pain, costing $1,500 out of my pocket. I discovered Dr. Ortman and Gentle Touch Chiropractic Adjustment called NUCA. I'm migraine-free since my first adjustment. Thanks for giving me my life back, Dr. Ortman. I wish they prescribed you instead of Botox. Thanks, DeRay. Putting the bones back in place is only half of the solution. We design a nutritional supplement program the body can handle, actually absorb, providing nutrients, targeting the problem area. Between NUCA and nutrition, we will have you on the road to a faster and more permanent recovery. Look us up on the web at drwartman.com or call 952-303-9124. Let us help you feel better faster. Wellspring Spinal Care at 952-303-9124. Again, that's 952-303-9124. Or on the web at Dr. O R T M A N dot. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Richard Dolan has to leave in a moment, so let's just talk to him a little bit further. We have Red Pill Junkie talking about the Roswell slides, or as Kevin Randall says, not the Roswell slides, <laughs> with Gene and Chris. Now, that's the big thing I'm going to ask you before you leave, Richard, and that is sure. even if this represents a possibly alien creature, even if it once was a living being, we can't assume it's Roswell. No, I agree with that. Totally agree with that. Now, uh, Don and uh, Don Schmidt and Tom Carey do believe that it represents uh, the creature from Roswell. Their feeling is they they think that the slide is from fall of 1947. They have their reasons for thinking that. Maybe they're right. And if you know, if you go on uh, those various assumptions, you would say, well, it makes the most sense. Uh, the reconstruction of the creature that was done 
they maintain is uh, a reasonably close facsimile to the descriptions that uh, witnesses had of the Roswell creature. I don't know, maybe, but no, I'm, I'm with you on that, Gene. I, I don't think, I don't know who called it the Roswell slides. I don't think they did. Um, Eventually, I, I think they still, picked up on it, though. They have. I mean, I think they've gone with the flow on it. But I agree. I mean, it's um, if it, it if we could determine that it's a truly anomalous creature, that's still not the same as connecting it to Roswell. But that, to me, is of lesser importance anyway. Richard Dolan, thank you for taking time out for a surprise appearance here in the Paracast. Well, I'm, I'm glad to do it. Uh, since this whole thing happened, this is the first time in my career in ufology that I've gotten actually a lot of hate mail. So I'm like, yeah. wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, every now and then in the past, I would get, I would get some really hard critics, you know, coming in on me. But uh, no, this is like a totally different well, the nice guys in the field doesn't deserve that. Thank you so much, Chris. Well, uh, I'm riding through, and it's it's, perf- it's okay, honestly. I mean, I understand how this issue can just generate such strong opinions. What I, I'll just add, though, what I'm I find a little bit um, disappointing is just the vitriol that I have witnessed, even long before I got involved in this, just observing this case or as it developed over the last couple of years, and the character assassination. I mean, if people like Tom Carey, when I hear of people cry, describing Tom Carey as a con man, I just want to laugh. I spent the entire last weekend with Tom, and he is the opposite of a smooth operator in every possible way that I can imagine, and he'd be the first to agree with that. He's the age of my dad. He's very set in his ways. He likes a quiet life. He's... Uh, He's not a con man. I mean, you might find things to disagree with him about in his research. Fine, be my guest. But, I mean, there are people out there who are just saying the most really vicious things about these guys. And I just don't see it. You know, I just I don't see why it's necessary. If you want to disagree with someone, uh, stay on point. But, my uh, only consideration here is maybe they try too hard to make that connection. And that's it, it. If that's so, then that's so. But uh, that doesn't make them bad people. And it, no, no, no. I mean, that's just not the way to, to conduct a, a discussion on anything. Uh, you know, stick to the main line, stick to the facts. But what I really, I've, I've told these guys. In fact, I went to the airport with them this morning out of Mexico City, and I said, for the umpteenth time, I said a website has to go up, and they agree with this, and uh, it's got to go up with all of the data, kind of like a home base for the slides with the slides themselves, high res, with uh, all of the testimony, the analysis, um, the videos, uh, interviews at a company, uh, the whole thing, just so that everyone can go to it and and then be able to um, have access to that information. I think that's really the only way to move ahead. That's what this is about. And I, I do believe that they will be doing that in the next week. Um, I, I'm actually anxious that they get it done because for my sake as well, just personally, I just want this whole thing done and up there. And I, again, I don't feel a need to argue pro or con. I have no problem saying that I was impressed by the testimony of the scientists. That's the main thing that's kept me interested up till now. Richard Dolan, thank you for joining us very briefly on the Paracast. My pleasure. Thanks, Gene. So that came as a surprise, folks, a big surprise. We had Richard Dolan making a brief appearance here, and he was one of the people who appeared, if only briefly, during this presentation. Now, Miguel, having had that brief conversation with Richard Dolan, what is your take on it? Well, uh, the first time I heard that that Rich had been approached by Mausan and accepted to get involved in, in the whole thing. Uh, I was kind of worried for his sake because, well, I like Rich. I, I had the pleasure to, to meet him for the first time last year at the Paradigm Symposium. He's a very likable guy, very approachable, you know, very, very congenial, you know. Uh, we, we had a, a chance to, to, to chat a few a few nights during the, the the paradigm event, and I was kind of worried because I really feared that Mausan was going to use his reputation in the UFO field as a promoting tool for the event. And I must reluctantly say that that was kind of the case. You know, I've heard on several times Mausan saying, you know, how. People thought that someone like with the stature of Richard Dolan or Don Smith, Don Smith or Tom Carey would risk their careers with some 
thing like uh, the, uh, the slides of a mummy, you know, uh, they, uh, they think that they were stupid or something. So I felt, ah, man, this guy is, is, is really uh, using them, you know, as pawns on this chessboard. And I, I also have to point out, this is not the first time he has tried to do that. I remember that some years ago when he was promoting what he said was the body of a small alien found uh, by uh, some farmer. I, I don't remember when exactly, but uh, th in the end, it turned out to be nothing but uh, the body of a, of a monkey, you know, a skinned monkey. Uh, he approached uh, a very prominent researcher in the 14th field that had happens to be a friend of mine. I, I, I don't want to, to, to give up his name because, well, uh, the, the thing transpired on a private conversation via email. And I also don't want to brag about, you know, oh, oh I'm, I'm friends with so-so. But, but my friend approached me and said, eh, Miguel, Mausan uh, has contacted me and he has sent me information about this uh, uh, but, uh, this thing that he found and he wants me to 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 see if he, if I get involved in, in, in the investigation and I said to my friend you know be aware that Mausan has already uh, shown this so-called alien body on national Mexican television and I'm not I'm not sure if he has already told you that and in that turned out to be the case. Mausan hadn't revealed to my friend that he that the body had, had already been publicly revealed. And then because of that, my friend decided to turn down Mausan's request and uh, he didn't get involved in that. And well, I think it was all for the better because it turned out to be nothing but a hoax. Now, what I'm seeing here, of course, is that we have three expert witnesses, like you have in a trial, who testify in favor of the plaintiff, the prosecution, prosecuting the case that there's two slides of E.T. On mm -hmm. the other hand, you know, other experts may be found that say, you know what, it's a mummy. Yeah, I mean, these uh, forensic experts, uh, Salse, Galindo, Doble, we don't know right now how, how much knowledge they have uh, studying mummies, be that... Uh, recent mummies, desiccated mummies, yeah, or ancient Egyptian mummies. Yeah, not to mention how much they may have been paid. Well, that's well, the other issue, too, you know. It's like anything else. They're well, hired help. Would they, we don't know their reputations. Um, Mausan uh, was very, uh, made, made it very clear because before Salsa's testimony, a uh, uh, representative of the Instituto Nacional de Ciencias Forenses, the National Institute of Forensic Sciences, uh, appeared on stage and, uh, and presented Mausan with their uh, official report that, that had been uh, elaborated by Salsi. And they made it clear that they never accept, ac accepted any money from, from Mausan, that uh, you know, no, they, they did it for free. Okay, that sounds certainly makes it more credible. We have Red Pill Junkie with Gene and Chris. We had a brief conversation also with Richard Dolan. More to come. You're in the Paracast. Neighbors, are you tired of dealing with a slow web hosting provider? Well, check out A2 Hosting and their screaming fast Swift server platform. They even have SSDs that load pages 300% faster than the competition. Ready to give your site a speed boost? Well, tell you what, neighbors, head on over to a2hosting.com. That's A2, that's number two, a2hosting.com. Check out their Prime Hosting account. And get this, neighbors, they're even giving you an exclusive 25% off discount for all our listeners, 25%. And remember, their Guru Crew support team is standing by 24-7, 365 days a year to answer any of your questions. Now, to get the discount, use the coupon code GENE when you check out. 
Have you ever felt like the United States government knows way too much about your financial affairs? I continue to hear stories about property seizures, frozen bank accounts, confiscation of stocks and bonds. It makes me wonder if the U.S. citizen will ever again have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Unfortunately, with the Drug and Money Laundering Act, the IRS Revenue Ruling 6045 of 1984, and the Trading with the Enemy Act and Franklin D. Roosevelt's Executive Order of 1933, some precious metal holdings are subject to government intervention. For this reason, Midas Resources has prepared a report explaining the boundaries of trading precious metals privately. Whether if you have any intention of trading with Midas Resources or not, I have instructed my representatives to give this report out free. Call for your free copy at 1-800-686-2237. When investing, always proceed with caution. Again, call 1-800-686-2237. Exercise your legal right to trade metals privately. 1-800-686-2237. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. So, I should tell you here that when we do the Paracast, we have plans... And sometimes things turn out differently, and we're glad that Richard Dolan had a few moments to join us to give his point of view, because it's important that we look into this seriously. As I said, I still think, and I'm not a forensic anthropologist, I still think it looks like a mummy. Yeah. But what do I know? Now, there's a second photo, the second slide. Let's talk about that second slide for a few moments, because Mm -hmm. the second slide, there's writing on it, on the little label or something. Yeah, and it, it was funny because, uh, like you have already mentioned, Gene, <laughs> uh, Mausan didn't show the second slide until the very end. And I even tweeted, you know, what happened to the second slide? You know, where is the second slide? And I, I, I really thought, well, maybe they're not going to show it after all. But then he said, no, this is the second. It's the same as the first, only it was taken without a flash. Right, so the same angle, the same position, but instead of sh- seeing the skirt and the legs of what seems to be a woman uh, wearing a blue dress, we use we see portion of uh, the the shirt and the trousers of a man standing next to the uh, to the showcase, and as you had already s- stated, the writing in the cardboard placard seems more. Uh, much more needed, although they claim that they were never able to to 
decipher the writing, but although at this moment we don't know if they attempted to do so with the second uh, darker slide. You know, Mao San said, well, you know, this is the first time that I see the slides. He had seen it on a computer screen. So when he saw it on stage, you know, he said, well, now that I look at it, you know, here on, this, on, on, on stage, it really looks uh, pretty neat, you know, because on, up until that, they thought that uh, it, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, their while to, to show it because it was way too dark. But, so we don't know if they, they will use the second slide to try to see what that placard uh, says. It sounds like a certainly key issue. Now, one thing to mention here, you didn't see the real slides. It was just a reproduction of the slides that was projected, right? Yeah, well, that doesn't really bother me that much. I mean, uh, what were they going to do? You know, use an old uh, uh, project or borrow from some school and, <laughs> and show that, that, that on the the National Auditorium, if it was shown in some small theater, yeah, then maybe they would have shown the slides. But I think that they had said beforehand that they didn't want to risk taking the, the slides to Mexico anyway. And well, you know, as a Mexican city, uh, I can kind of understand that, you know, <laughs> having been had problems, you know, some kind of, sometimes with uh, missing luggages and whatnot. I understand. I'm looking at the slide, and I see the color looks normal. Now, understand Kodachrome no longer being used, but it was a daylight slide film, okay? You'd made reversals, they call them. You'd made actual slides. You'd be able to project the physical slide. You wouldn't have a negative. It'd be a direct transparency. Mm -hmm. So the question here is, would there have been color correction to those slides? when they were projected? That would be an interesting question that we'd have to ask them. I also question uh, their claim that the body it, it was about three to four feet long. I, I don't know about you, Gene and Chris, but I look at the images and it looks way shorter than that, you know? Maybe uh, maybe no yeah, more than right. two That's feet. feet looks more like three feet. Well, the thing here also is you have to evaluate it in relationship to the only size that can be measured or considered, which is that of this woman. So I guess you're trying to assume here how big is it or was it compared to the physical person who is seen there. Of course, you don't know how tall that person is. If it's a woman, as it appears to be, maybe her average height would be from five feet to five and a half feet. Maybe, but well... Uh... I'm a designer, right? I, I, I design furniture. So from a designer point of view, my estimate is that the, the glass um, shelf in which the body is, uh, is, has, was put, I don't think it's uh, more than 12 inches in depth, you know? So maybe that's a point of comparison to try to assess its size. Well, it still comes down to the same thing here. Is this a human being? Is this an alien? And if it is an alien, where was this taken? And why would it be treated in such a casual fashion? That's the biggest thing about it. When we set aside what the scientists said, the three scientists, and we look at the picture, it is so troubling. It's no wonder so many people disbelieve it. Now, after the scientists came on, and they gave their presentation. Obviously, Richard Dolan was clearly impressed by it. What else happened? Was that the end of the show? Yeah, after Galindo, who was, who was the third specialist, gave his uh, uh, testimony or presentation, it was uh, uh, the turn of... Uh, after that, then it was the... Uh, time for the quote-unquote hologram, you know, to, to be shown, you know, when the alien was supposed to come alive and walk on stage, you know, and, and maybe it was because the, 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 the place where I was seated, you know, I was, uh, we were in one of the balconies, so we were on a very 
uh, on a very um, angle uh, looking down at the at the stage so whatever kind of interesting effect of you know of seeing thing like a hologram was supposed to to be you know i i didn't catch it because to me it was just, it seemed just like a uh like a cgi uh, reconstruction you know moving around and on and, and that shown on on a on some kind of a, a, a rectangle screen, you know, and I, in my opinion, it, it, it lasted way too long, you know, more than a minute and a half, you know, not even a, a decent walking cycle, you know, from an animation point of view, you know, so uh, maybe they could have short, they cut that short, shorter. I think the entire thing could have been cut shorter. Yeah. And done in a more presentable fashion. I still do not understand why you had to go to Mexico City for this. Because if you want to get the attention of the American media, you go to Washington, D.C., you go to the National Press Club. You don't go to some place there. And I'm not saying it's not a great location. As you say, it's mm -hmm. a prestigious location in Mexico City. It certainly is a venue where you have entertainment figures. It's a place that obviously is a well-built structure and something that someone would be proud to have an event there, but it's kind of off the beaten track in terms of getting media attention. We've got more to talk about with Miguel, Red Pill Junkie, and Gene and Chris, you're in Independently leading the way for the nation, compelling talk. For every political persuasion, we are GCN. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that too in Graphic Converter. Also print catalogs convert from so many formats i can't even list them download now to see if graphic converter is good for you like one and a half million other users guess what you could save money when you buy graphic converter use the coupon code night owl use the coupon code night owl to get a special price for graphic converter go to lemkesoft.com that's l-e-m-k-e soft.com lemkesoft.com l-e-m-k-e soft.com we live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document? Worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average over 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855 340 SAVE. 855 340 7283. Results will vary from case to case. A little over a year ago, I began to do a lot of research into why, even though I had a pretty good-sized meal, that I was still starving. And my research led me to a well-known fact that most of the soils that we grow our crops on here in the United States and across the industrialized world are almost completely depleted of almost all of the key minerals and trace elements that our bodies need to rebuild themselves, fight off cancer, and be healthy. I then searched out the best vitamin and mineral company out there and discovered Longevity. The Longevity products are designed to give you the real nutrition you need, and once you've got that, you don't have to eat as much to be satisfied. I've lost 37 pounds in two months. 
simply getting the vitamins and minerals I need. Check it out for yourself. It's incredible. Go to InfoWarsTeam.com today and order your first canister of Beyond Tangy Tangerine Complete Multivitamin Mineral Complex Dietary Supplement. That's InfoWarsTeam.com. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products, most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. Hi, this is James Fox from Chasing UFOs. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Chris O'Brien's on the road, which is why he sounds hollow, because he's suffering from the digital haze of a cell phone connection. Unfortunately, we have red pill junkie Miguel, who attended the Roswell Slides or not the Roswell Slides event. And we're trying to put things together to figure out what's going on and whether these two slides show a being that did not originate on this earth. And it'd be nice to see what that little sign is all about. If only it can be interpreted. I suppose if there is a higher resolution version. Were you able to see anything when you saw that second slide or did it pass too quickly to figure out what the lettering was about? Um, the lettering was completely undecipherable. You know, they, they they didn't even attempt to do some kind of uh, zoom in to try to see if uh, if you could make out something of it. You know, I, 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 the only thing that I could detect was that it seemed to have been uh, written with some kind of um, purplish purplish ink or some kind. Like a magic marker or something? That would be black, wouldn't it? No, they've had purple magic markers. But back in the 1940s, did they have magic markers? I don't know. You know, but I, I, I'm not sure if uh, if a uh, magic marker... I think that the, the point will be too uh, too thick, don't you think? Maybe... I think they, they probably used some kind of fountain thing. Okay, it looks like the magic marker came out in 1953. Sorry about that, folks. Just looked it up. It's Sidney Rosenthal's magic marker. So there you go, what that's about. Oh, by the way, I had a question here from Constance, and I'm going to summarize it pretty quickly from our forums. Mm -hmm. And mostly it's whether scientists having been exposed to this and because of the fact that several scientists gave a pretty positive presentation, is that going to be enough to bring other scientists to look at the slides and make their own determinations? Or will it be just dismissed out of hand, which is what I'm adding to that question? Well, who knows? Maybe, uh, like Rich said, you know, the first order of the day for them will be to to release a press issue along with um, with the scientific report, the paper that uh, the forensic scientists elaborated, translated in English, of course, and publish them as soon as possible. So. So other si independent scientists can read it and they can re assess whether uh, it's valid data or it's, or it's only uh, wishful thinking. Now, here's the big question, which I guess we can discuss, and there's no answer to it, really, I think. And that is, even if that picture shows an alien being, there's no way to know where it was taken. There's no way to know who took it. No way to know exactly when we can only guess within a range of months or years so what do we do with it yeah who knows you know i mean like you said there is not even there is also no way to determine whether the being is an extraterrestrial right i mean how could you say that you know you 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 can determine that from from an image you know at, at least you could say it's an anomalous body 
you can't go beyond that. And, and uh, I remember how uh, Nick Redfern, you know, uh, when, in, on his post at Mysterious Universe, I think he hit the nail of the head once he said that even if the slides turn out to be the real deal, then pro they will probably go and become like the Roswell version of the Patterson Gimli film, you know, that the famous or infamous uh, film taken in 1967 in the Pacific Northwest. And all these years later, you know, you still have 50% of the people in, the, in cryptozoology claiming that is what it really shows some kind of unknown uh, hominid uh, roaming the, the forest of the Pacific Northwest, while the other 50% uh, says that it's just a guy in a gorilla suit, you know, and 100% of the skeptics just laughing at it, at it. And the reason for that is the same reason that we really can't do anything with, with these Roswell slides, because they don't, we don't have a body yet. We don't have a Bigfoot body, and we certainly don't have an alien body. I think that's a real good analogy. You know, I think the Patterson Gilman film would be a, a good comparison. The jury will always be out on that film, just as the jury will undoubtedly always be out on these slides. I think there's too many holes in the story. There's not enough uh, provenance or uh, the evidence chain. And I think that there's, that's always going to give the skeptics and the debunkers just enough room to, you know, have it become wedge, have these issues become wedge issues. And always keep this thing up in the air in terms of, of its efficacy and whether, you know, we're dealing with something that's that's truly diagnostic and high strange. I, I personally don't see it. But again, yeah. I've been gone. I haven't had a chance to really dive into the testimony of the scientists, nor have I had a chance to really take a good look, a careful look at the actual um, higher recipe productions of the slides. So, but your your point is well taken about the Patterson film. I think that's yeah, a very, very I good analogy. Yeah, and this is, of course, the best case scenario, because worst case scenario is that this is just the uh, Santilli alien auto autopsy video all over again, right? And just another hoax, and maybe one that will really undermine even more the, 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 the Roswell case. And there's even a lot of some people pointing out some uh, kind of odd uh, well, coincidences between the Santilli uh, video and the Roswell slides. The first one that apparently they were, were released uh, with exactly 20 years of difference, and I, I'm not sure that's actually the case. You know, May 5th of 1995 with the Santilli video and May 5th of 2015 with the Roswell slides. And also, uh, I think that George... Weinfield is claiming that uh, 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 Santilli ha uh, had a nickname for his uh, uh, alien puppet. He named it Hilda. And Hilda is the name of the person who allegedly is involved in, in the whole provenance with the slides. So I don't know. It's, it, it gets weirder and weirder. And interesting that all that information uh, first surfaced on the Paracast forums, too. Ah, yeah. He mentioned that there was the, the Paracas Forums wa was involved. And also he mentioned John Lundberg, who was the, uh, yeah, the, the director of. Uh, and would not deny being involved. So. Wow. So there you go. You know, even curiouser and curiouser. Well, again, the Paracas yeah. makes the news. Mm -hmm. How that goes. All right. So there we have it, folks. And we've got another segment to do on this week's episode. But we're still getting this central picture here that regardless of how the analysis turns out, it doesn't prove Roswell. It doesn't prove anything except that we once had some anomalous creature that may or may not have lived, may or may not have been some kind of Hollywood mock-up, may have been a museum piece may have represented the creature that landed a thousand years ago. I mean, if it's a mummy, wouldn't it be a thousand or two thousand or three thousand years old? That's another point of view. Okay. What do you think, Chris? I don't know. I, again, I'm, I'm going to reserve judgment until I get a chance to 
get my fanny back uh, home in front of my computer. Uh, I really haven't had a chance to, uh, like I said, really look into the latest. Uh, you know, I I think Rich is right. We need to listen to uh, to the experts uh, who are trotted out. Please give them uh, a chance to make their case. Um, and also, obviously, I'd like to take a look at the larger versions of higher res and higher res versions of, of the slides. I'm, I'm, I'm very doubtful. You know, I tend, tend to be skeptical around sensational claims like this. So it's going to take a lot to really convince me that we're dealing with something um, completely above board and legitimate. I, I don't think we are. So if you tuned in late, you'll want to listen to the show again because we had about 16 or 18 minutes spent with Richard Dolan, who was on the stage at the Roswell Slides presentation. We have Gene and Chris and Red Pill Junkie, not the Roswell Slides you're in. The Paracast. Great minds think alike. The network for the independent-minded. The Genesis Communications Network. GCN. Attack of the Rockoids has been well-received by critics and readers alike. It's a -a thrill-a-minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. You pick up the receiver with your heart racing and sweat dripping from your forehead. You finally muster the courage to dial the number to call into your favorite talk radio show. It rings once, twice, and then... Hello, it's GCN. What's your name and the state you're calling from? Surprised you got through, you squeak out. Jason from Minnesota. Please hold. As you patiently wait for your turn, you begin to daydream about being a famous talk radio host and what it would be like to have your own show. Jason from Minnesota, you're up. Millions of loyal listeners worldwide waiting to call and talk to you. You. Caller, are you there? Cheering crowds surround you, calling out your name. Jason! Jason! Going once, twice. Okay, we gotta move on to the next caller. You blew it. Huh? Wait, no! Interact with the host you're listening to right now, online at GCNlive.com. Click on the community link, engage with other listeners, ask questions, start debates. Don't agree with the host? Let them know. Be a part of the community at GCNlive.com. It's time to build your own emergency food stockpile with the industry leader, My Patriot Supply. Once you try them, you'll know why so many Americans like you have made them part of their emergency preparedness plan. Experience the My Patriot Supply difference today with this unbelievable offer. Right now, a four-week food supply is only $99, and that includes free shipping. That's 50% off the online price. Call 800-274-3070 to claim yours. Limit two per caller while supplies last this offer isn't available online so you want to make sure and grab this opportunity to get prepared today 800-274-3070 to get your four-week food supply for the incredible price of only 99 dollars, and it'll be shipped to you completely free call 800-274-3070 right now that's 800-274-3070 to claim yours while supplies last don't wait call today Did you know that drinking pure, high alkaline water is one of the most important factors in maintaining high energy and vibrant health? Most experts agree that the water you drink should be at a pH level of 8 or higher. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops, available only at AlkaVision.com, combine a unique formula of only the most alkaline minerals. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops alkalize your water, ridding the body of harmful toxins, and helps you regain health and energy. Alkalizing your water by simply adding 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops helps 
helps the body rid itself of acidic waste, increases oxygen content, and raises the pH of your body to healthy levels. And bacteria and viruses cannot survive in an alkaline high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops for only $29.95 at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. This is Jacques Vallée, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Chris is on the road, which is why his voice is filled with digital haze. You think here in the 21st century, we have all these miraculous things that mobile phones can do, but they can't get the network to deliver decent sound that can't even match two tin cans held together by a wire. It doesn't sound that bad, does it? Uh, I think the tin cans have it over. Well, I'm sorry. I'm I'm now only about 40 minutes away from the house, but the show's almost over. So I, I, I gave it my best shot, but... That's okay. I had, I had the weekend from hell. <laughs> we don't want to talk about that. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about it on After the Paracast this week, but... We're focusing here on the Roswell Slides, or not the Roswell Slides, with Red Pill Junkie. I have another question from our forum, and it's not really about this case, but I thought maybe you'll have a chance to answer it right now. Mm -hmm. And that is, did you hear about any interesting, specific Mexican UFO cases while you were there? And I guess this is with regard to the Roswell Slides event, but that wouldn't apply, would it? No, I didn't. Uh, one thing that they did mention during the intermission, you know, that I listened to after I rushed from the from the bar, from the restrooms, like the rest of the people attending, was that they were promoting some kind of uh, documentary about the Jerusalem Temple Dome, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, that. Chris will recognize that this video has been proven a hoax, right? The the, the famous, the infamous 2011 video that was allegedly take, taken on Jerusalem uh, on, on uh, with the light coming right yeah, over the, 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 the perpetrators the, came forward. Exactly. But uh, here you have, you know, Mausan and, and, and his operation uh, uh, treating the case as, as legit. So, huh. Obviously, there have been discussions about this, that based on very rough outside estimates, including the on-demand streaming video, that maybe they got between a quarter of a million dollars or a little bit higher in revenue, but the sponsor says they lost about $100,000. Should we even worry about that, or is that a credible thing to consider? I don't know. I mean, I've certainly read a lot of people uh, accusing uh, Mausan of being a hawkster, a con man, and that uh, he did it only for the money. And my own personal opinion is that I don't think it's as simple as that. I don't think, I, I honestly think that if Mausan's uh, uh, intentions were, uh, weren't purely uh, monetary, I, I truly believe that he, first of all, he has always liked to be the center of attention. I think he, he did it to try to retain his position as the uh, most prominent ufologist in Mexico. Maybe he want to, wanted to go down in history and said, look, I was the only one who was able to fill the national auditorium with a UFO event. Maybe he has convinced himself that he, what he's doing is the right thing. I mean, I mean I'm sure he would have run with the money a long time ago if it wasn't the case, you know? So with Mausan, I think yeah. that he really is probably uh, uh, deceiving himself. His intentions you know? are honorable, but his, possibly his BS meter isn't quite as fine-tuned as it should be. Yeah, probably. You know, probably his uh, necessity to, to keep uh, showing things to the public, you know, for, and, and for his Tercer Milenio TV program, you know, makes him, you know, publish things that uh, are uh, questionable, to say the least. Yeah, but I think I think his intentions 
by and large are honorable. I just think he uh, he's very excitable, and uh, I think sometimes he he wants to believe so much that that possibly his judgment is could be called into question. Yeah, I, I think that he he sees himself as some some kind of a martyr, you know, always being attacked by 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 the skeptics and the, the bunkers, you know, and he is fighting the good fight in order to to bring about. But, uh, UFO disclosure, you know, and, and uh, uh, that kind of rhetoric is very appealing to the Mexican audience. Well, again, I just wish they held this event in this country. I think it would have been treated more credibly. And also, I think the media would have paid more attention to it, because right now, when you look at the coverage, you see scattered newspapers around the world, even the Huffington Post, even the Huffington Post which has some serious coverage of UFOs with Lee Spiegel hmm. and others, they had an article posted on this and they removed it because the editors said that there were errors in it. Hmm. So Lee Spiegel uh, published that? Uh, he didn't write the article, no. Oh. written by somebody else. Somebody apparently had penned an article on the Roswell slides that was withdrawn hmm. Because of apparent factual errors. What about uh, Billy Cox on his uh, The Boys uh, column? I haven't seen what he's written yet. Uh, uh, because I think that I read in Kevin Randall's blog that he uh, contacted uh, uh, one of the people who uh, uh, apparently uh, studied the slides, you know, someone who is uh, uh, located in Rochester, New York. And uh, apparently, the, 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 uh, the Anthony Bragalia had, had claimed that he had uh, uh, bothered that person, but uh, I'm not sure if that is actually the truth or not. I know all this buildup before the event is what left a bad taste in the mouths of many people. I yeah, think that yeah. really hurt it, don't you? I agree completely. I think that there was way too much hype and hyperbole they could have toned it down a notch and i think that maybe uh, jose caravaca you know one of the people who have been uh, also investigated this case it was he had a point and said you know maybe he they could have avoided all this bad blood if he had they had been a little more forthcoming you know they in, instead of you know trying to keep the slides or this uh, as this big secret until the very end, maybe they could have shared it with a few of the in, a few independent researchers in order to try to to build um, a stronger case for them. And we're not saying that those three scientists are wrong in what they say. It's just that, as you point out, it could have been done in a much better way. And what a good shut up. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not the one who promoted this, so what do I know? And I've only done one UFO convention. At least uh, Jaime, what, lost $100,000, he says. When I ran this UFO convention with my business partner back in the 1970s, I think we lost, all told, $135. Oh, Got off light. I felt lucky in retrospect. Yeah. Red Pill Junkie, can you tell our listeners where they can find more of the stuff you write about? Sure. Well, I'm a regular contributor for several sites, uh, The Daily Grail, Mysterious Universe, um, the Intrepid uh, Magazine blog. And I'm, I'm also a semi-regular uh, guest on the Grimerica show podcast run by my friends uh, Darren and Graham. And you also will see me, you know, uh, creeping around on the on the Paracas forums here and there. <laughs> yes, he does lurk. In, he's here in strange ways. You find him on the Paracast forums. You can also find us on Twitter, by the way. On Twitter, we're known as the Paracast. Look for the Paracast on Twitter. Look for two Paracast fan clubs on Facebook. You can't have one when you can have two. And we have that other service that we were talking about during the first segment. We also have the Powercast Plus. What's that all about? Well, we have a second radio show called After the Powercast. And to get yourself a copy of that show, to hear it, you have to join the Powercast Plus. We also offer the ad-free version of the show, higher resolution audio. 
All told, it's five bucks a month, 50 bucks a year, $175 for a five year subscription. And we've got one more thing to present. Like Apple says at their events, one more thing. If you join for a year or more, you get a copy free of the ebook version of Stalking with Tricksters by our own Chris O'Brien. To find out more about the Paracast Plus, go to plus.theparacast.com, P L U S dot the paracast.com what a show we had earlier we had a brief visit by richard dolan ufo historian and red pill junkie thank you so much for joining us on the paracast thank you for having me guys the paracast Featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast.